Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Crumble Mumble podcast. So excited to have you here and even more excited for the guest that we have today. This is a guest I've been looking forward to all season. As you guys know, Crumble Cookies is a tech driven bakery. And today we have none other than our chief tech officer, Bryce Red, with us, who's going to talk to us about all things Crumble, all things tech and how it's all been integrated and and how tech helps Crumble do what it does every single day. So, Bryce, thanks for being here. I'm excited to be here and yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never done a podcast in my life. So this is my very first. Hey, maybe you'll be so good at it that you'll quit your day job <laughs> and do podcasting full time. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're lucky that, that you're with us here today. You're busy running all the tech behind Crumble. Before we get into that, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how you got to Crumble, sure. all that good stuff? I'd love to. Um, so... Uh, I'm Bryce Red. I, uh, I'm the CTO here at Crumble. I, I love it. I love doing technology. Um, I started actually uh, right out of college. I worked at a company with Jason, okay. the, the CEO. Yes, yes, yes. And um, he was the product manager and I was one of the engineers and we built a ton of software together um, for five years. Okay. Uh, and, and we actually met a bunch of the early engineers here at Crumble that we brought over later from that same company. Yeah, okay. So, so cool. So you did that for five years and then the company I'm assuming is no longer around. RIP. That's true. Yeah. Yes. That, that company went away and, and, and from there I actually moved to Facebook. Um, mm. so I spent five years out there in, um, Menlo park. Okay, cool. And, and I worked on some of their applied machine learning teams. Um, we did, uh, a lot of technology around Instagram and, um, if you've mm. ever done any of those face masks, have you seen those? Where face masks like filters? Yeah, filters. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. So yes, I have. I've dabbled in filters from from time to time. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so that's a. It's actually really interesting. There's a ton of math that happens behind the scenes. Really. To get those painted on your face. I had no idea. I just thought it was just a little sticker just popped up and just you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, everything from stickers. Um, there's some good location tracking that we did over there. Mm -hmm. um, we also did. Um, yeah, some optical flow and some particles. Uh, to strike that out. That's stupid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're great. No, that's great. Uh, yeah, we did awesome. A lot of awesome technology. I mean, just the best people in the world work over there and I couldn't have had a funner time. Um, we built so much stuff and you know, there's a lot of controversy around Facebook nowadays, but I personally just had the time of my life. You just loved it. Was it. So much fun. it was great. That's Absolutely. awesome. And, and then you came from there to crumble, correct? Almost. Almost. So briefly, okay. I, I, I actually started at Snapchat. Oh, uh, no. So you went from Facebook to Snapchat. Okay. Yeah. Look at you go bouncing around all the social media. Uh, uh, yeah, right. I it's, love it. So Facebook, I was there for five years, but Snapchat, I, I was only there for six weeks. Um, oh, six weeks. Yeah. And then. Dang. Okay. So that was just, I mean, that was just very short. Yeah. And, uh, and at that time, Jason kind of reached out to me and he said, hey, we have uh, this cookie store that we started in Logan and it's doing pretty well. I need you to help me out with like a little, a little website. Mm, and I'm a like, little, okay. a little website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, this will be fine. So I just did some work for free yeah. actually on crumble. And then like a week later he comes back and he's like, Hey, you should, you should probably just leave your job and like, come oh, and oh my me. gosh. So you, wow. So you, you developed it like just on your own time for free. You said, yeah, just as a little side thing, a little side favor for Jason mm. week later, Jason says, JK, quit your job and quit your come job do this and come over dang okay and that's intense yeah i yeah. mean at that that part i i kind of went to my wife and i said you know like we've we've been doing really well at facebook and snapchat and mm -hmm. um you know we, at that time we were making tons of money yeah we, had, we were making well over a half million a year and when jason came he said I can't really pay you any money right now. Oh my gosh. So, and <laughs> and by, by the way, your health insurance. Yeah. We don't have any of that. We can't give that to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't have 401k. We don't have uh, nothing. Like, yeah, there's nothing. like anything. Yeah. And, and so I was like, well, okay, well, I mean, I see potential here. So, so yeah. maybe, maybe it could work out. But yeah. uh, I honestly just plan to do it as kind of like a, a two month thing and, and be done. And then if, and when, it mm -hmm. didn't work out, then you could just jump back. Then to you can go you back. And, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That, I love that that's kind of the origin story of Crumble all around. This idea of like, oh, if and when this doesn't take off, right? Jason and Sawyer, their first building was set to be demolished in six months, yeah. right? So their thoughts were, okay, if and when this doesn't work, 
we're not tied to anything with you. You're like, okay, like I'll do this for a minute. And then if, and when, so I love that, that that's kind of in the story of crumble throughout its entire lifetime. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so then you were brought on and I loved hearing you talk about the tech side of crumble specifically. Sure. And like your aspect on that, like your, your insight on that. Do you want to speak to that a little bit about how you view crumble being the tech guy for crumble? Yeah, we have, I mean, we have a ton of technology, um, as, as most customers can see, we have a, you know, a nice app and a good website. Mm -hmm. It goes so much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Um, so most companies will actually contract out and just buy like little pieces of software and kind of put them together like Legos. Yeah. Um, at crumble, we've taken a different approach and it really, it, we really hit a point where we had to, had to do it all by ourselves when, when we started to grow to more than six locations. Mm. Um, so, so for example, just some of the limitations we had were, uh, we didn't really have a good way of doing gift cards. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so as you might know, crumbles are all franchised. So they're technically separate businesses. Yes. And yeah. for businesses to share gift cards back and forth between each other, there wasn't a good solution mm. and, and neither for loyalty points. So we had people who would buy, you know, a gift card from Orem and then try to redeem it at, at, Provo or something and mm -hmm. like it didn't work. Yeah. 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 And so at that point we thought we've got to, we've got to own it. We've got to, we've got to own the point of sale. We've got to own the mm -hmm. app. We've got to own the ticket fulfillment. We've got to own the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, and so we really kind of put, put the stake in the ground and said, look, if, if we didn't make it here, then it's probably not the right solution for us. Yeah. And so you, that's something that I've loved about crumbles. You guys do everything in house, right? Right? Yes. Do yeah. You, do you? <laughs> no, we definitely do. Okay. Um, cool. Now we still have like a couple things that we need to purchase to help, you know, scheduling employees and this and that. But um, the vast majority of what we run on is in house. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. our own stats, our own analytics, our own finance, our own accounting, mm -hmm. um, how the customers interact with us, kiosk, point of sale, the whole thing was written in house. Love it. That's so cool. And I also have loved how you've talked about uh, crumbles, crumbles business side of tech. Do you yeah. want to speak to that a little bit about how crumbles business model is so heavily relied on its tech? Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you really think about crumble corporate, we, we actually aren't a cookie company. Mm -hmm. I know we are, but, <laughs> but, but when you peel back the covers, crumble corporate is actually a business that sells businesses. So we want to to give our customers, which are franchisees, yeah. the best business possible. We want it mm -hmm. to be the easiest to set up, the easiest to maintain, um, give the best product to our customers, give uh, what uniforms are wear, what to say, all the things we need to communicate. Yeah. So at its core, Crumble Corporate is actually a communications business where we need to output all of these good things that we've developed and we've figured out over the years, as well as figure out what we need to do, mm -hmm. which is a big part of it. And, and th those can all be written in code. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so, I mean, you've probably seen a lot of the tools that we use. Yes. Back yes, and yes, forth. Yes. And there's a ton of them. So you're on the tech side and you're doing all the tech stuff for Crumble. But, um, I think as a lot of people here, people think we're all just like obsessed with cookies, which we are, we are obsessed with cookies, but that sure. we just go home and we, after we, we go out of the office, we just go cook cookies all day. Like we just bake cookies all day. Right. I personally don't. And I feel like you also it definitely probably not. don't. Yeah. I am the worst baker of all time. <laughs> um, so I, I personally own four crumble stores uh -huh. around the nation and I, I, I frosted my first sugar cookie last month. No in way. In the Orem store. Okay. Um, yes. In our Orem, Utah store. That's yeah. One of our, our, that's our only corporate store actually. Yeah. Yep. So, so the trainer had me, you know, put the right glob on there and do this, do this world. And it was so bad. She literally <laughs> took it out of my hand and put it in the trash can. Oh God. And so, so that's my, I'm over one. So that's it. That was, <laughs> that was you quit while you were behind. And, 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 like, then, I'm and then, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'll just go back to mixing dough or something. <laughs> Um, that yeah, is so I awesome. definitely haven't, haven't done a lot of, um, cookie development. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I just love looking at the whole process in the abstract. So, yes. so it like, if, if you just take a journey between if I'm a customer mm -hmm. and I have the app and I, and I tap in, I want a curbside pickup. So first of all, just to get the right prices and the cookies on your phone, there's a lot of stuff that we have to pre-calculate. Yeah. You know, the taxes, the where you're at, the closest store, are they open? Is it a holiday? 
all of that needs to happen. And then when the customer gets close, they tap I'm here. Well, what that actually does is it goes to another program we've written custom inside the bakery that shows that particular ticket saying what exactly cookies we, we, should we put in the box for this customer. Mm -hmm. um, the baker fills that, hits another button that goes back to the customer. And, and what we've done there is we've actually timed how long it takes. So now the, the baker will, will bring that down to the, to the customer and the customer's happy. The customer can review that. They take a picture of their cookies. Have you ever seen that? Yes, at the yeah, end? yeah, yeah. So, so that picture, we actually look at that picture and it goes straight to another team at corporate mm -hmm. in real time. And somebody at corporate will look at that and they'll judge every single cookie. Crazy. They'll say this cookie is a 10. This cookie is not good enough. This is yeah. And then that data will then flow into another app that we've built for the franchise partner. Mm -hmm. And they can see exactly how well their cookies look. They can see how long it's taking their store. So just Dang. at a glance, yeah. they have real time information on how good their store is. Which is so valuable from a quality perspective, right? Because I think a lot of people, when they think about, first when they think about Crumble, they think, oh, it's just cookies, right? And then mm -hmm. they get another layer like, oh, it's it's a tech-driven cookie company, right? Mm -hmm. Then they get another layer and it's, no, it's a super high quality tech-driven cookie company. And that quality comes from things like that, right? And your tech enables it to be that level of quality all the time. Uh, I mean, we try so hard to keep our tech yeah. quality very high. Yeah. Um, our app is regularly between uh, number three and number five on the um, food and beverage cap Heck category. Heck yeah, snaps, snaps <laughs> right? all around, yeah. <laughs> we compete with, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and Subway and Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. and we have a 10th of the stores that they do. Yeah. And and we're up there trying to compete with them in, in, in ranking on the app store. Uh, we have 2 million downloads, or I'm sorry, 2 million reviews mm -hmm. on an average of 4.9 stars. So. So amazing. It, so, it's yeah, really good. Amazing. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've built a lot of apps in my day and it's just so hard to build an app that people actually use. Yes. And then actually like. Yes. And, so true. And we care about this so deeply. So, uh, I mean, definitely if there's any kind of issues or anything <laughs> people have, let me know. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll give you his number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Personal his number. Direct line. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And, and I think it's important to also note you were correct me if I'm wrong, employee number one of Crumble. There's a little bit of question mark a little gray about area. who was actually the first. Um, I think full time, I probably was. Okay, um, yeah. So you've really been here since the beginning. I remember the first day that I went into a Crumble. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this Crumble for context was a warehouse. Ah, uh, yes. Not like a big one, like a small, <laughs> like industrial, like kind of in the corner warehouse. Yeah. And, and they just put some ovens in the back, their bacon cookies, and all they did was delivery. Okay, You yeah. couldn't walk in and, and how they would do these deliveries is they would take four chocolate chips and put it in a box. Mm -hmm. And then they'd take four sugars and they'd put it in another box. Mm -hmm. One was hot, one was cold. And then they would have sometimes uh, 40 different drivers Good just, night. just load up like the whole back seat of their cars with 40 different boxes yeah. of crumble cookies. And they, and then they would start driving towards a city. Yeah. Uh, so this is in Orem. And then like 10 miles away is a different city. They would, they would just head that direction. They were just mass driving all over all the place. of these places. And, and you would have the craziest things because uh, they would stay out there in those cities and just kind of drive around to the deliveries in that yeah. area. Cause we didn't have, you know, a, a box where you could, you know, I want this type of cookie. This No, no, no. Mm -hmm. you had four chocolate chips or four sugar. And that cookies. was it. That, was, that it. was it. Yeah. And, and then they would run out of cookies and you'd send another driver with another truck bed full of cookies oh over and they'd meet at some gas station oh gosh. And, and they'd fill them up. And <laughs> it, it was, it was just, I remember sitting down and thinking, this is a dumpster just fire. Chaos. That was the, those were the words in my head. This is a dumpster <laughs> fire. It was chaos. Some nights uh, we didn't know how to plan for demand. Yeah. And some nights we would just get slammed with so many orders. Yeah. And, and it was so complicated of who's going where, um, that, that I actually, this is my favorite piece of technology that I think I've ever written for crumble. Really? Okay. I'm so excited to hear about it. D yeah. What so, was it? So I wrote a program mm -hmm. that would plan out which driver goes to which deliveries. Okay. Okay. So, so it gets a little technical, yeah. but there's something called the traveling salesman problem. And it's a classical computer science problem. That's that's what's called NP hard. Okay, it's a little technical, okay. but that basically means you can't solve it easily. 
You, you like it's no difficult. amount of computers can just brute force it to the best solution. Gotcha. You, you okay. have to do okay. tricks to find which driver is going to go to the right place yeah. to be optimal. Cause you don't want people wasting gas and you want people to get their cookies on time. You want to be efficient and effective. So we had yes. to get the right boxes to the right person in the right time. Of, not too early. People get upset. Not too late. Oh, upset gosh. again. I'm like getting a headache just thinking about that right now. And if you have 40 drivers doing 200, you know, pending tasks around a 40 mile area, yeah, it gets very complicated. So, so what I wrote was called a genetic algorithm that would basically um, spawn different solutions. It would just kind of randomly build them. And then, oh. and then you'd have a generation where you would take the best solutions. Yeah. And then you would breed them <laughs> with other <laughs> solutions and then you mutate them and then you do Whoa. kind of a random selection and you do another generation yeah. of potential routes. Whoa, that is blowing my mind. We do millions of these every two minutes for every yeah. single store to get the right route. Whoa. For all of these drivers. And that's just one tiny sliver of Crumbles Tech. Is this what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, in fact, it, like we don't use it anymore, obviously. Yeah, it's, but like that, I mean, yeah. That was just like one tiny part of it. Just yeah. one little thing. And we spun up and we did so many calculations around just getting the cookies on time. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. Oh, how long did it take you to get that to where it was functioning how you wanted it to? I mean, that one was probably on and off six weeks, kind of getting that in Dang. the right spot, yeah. integrating it in with the, you know, the apps that the drivers would use mm -hmm. and with the customers and mm -hmm. getting everything syncing in real time. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. So that, that's your favorite tech element you've developed. I mean, that's definitely probably up the there. most nerdy, <laughs> which I like. <laughs> which you love, which is good that you like that because that's your whole job. It's, you, that's, that's great. True. That's true. <laughs> um, I, I, I also just, I mean, right now, I think our app is just really awesome. We yes. spent so much time making it fluid. Mm -hmm. um, we also have just awesome stats mm -hmm. internally. Um, a lot of people are data driven at Crumble, not yeah. just owners of stores, uh, but the bakers, the drivers, the people working on build outs, the, uh, just across the board, we have really good stats. We spend a tremendous amount of time getting just the right numbers in the right spot, mm -hmm. real time. It's yeah. been so difficult. Oh, I'm um, sure. Yeah, it's not a small task. Yeah, but in the end, like it really makes a difference when you can measure the right things. Yes, and that's something that we've seen a lot from our, our customer base that they've commented on a lot is how much Crumble pays attention to the details in a lot of things, mm. but especially with, with the tech. Like you said, that is so integral to a really good high-level experience, like an experience that is so good that you want to tell other people about it, right? I love it. Yeah. I love it. Tell yeah, your yeah. friends. Yes, tell your friends about Crumble, <laughs> which is so awesome. Um, thank you for sharing all of that. Sure. Um, before we wrap up, I'm going to ask you the hardest question that I ask anyone on this podcast. You guys already oh, know boy. what I'm going to ask him. What is your favorite Crumble cookie flavor? Oh, pumpkin chocolate chip. Oh, you knew. No you question. knew so fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. It's well, it's spongy. your season. It's your, it's pumpkin season. This is your time. You get those semi-sweet chips in there. Mm -hmm. So good. And it's I feel like that one's one of our lighter cookies. Like, yeah. I could eat a whole one of those without thinking about it. Whereas, like, our brownie Sunday one, I eat a quarter of that and I'm tapped, right? That's pretty thick. Yeah, but the, the pumpkin chocolate chip, I could eat probably two of those. I mean, I'm not going to admit to any... <laughs> amount of cookies <laughs> of those that I've eaten at one sitting, but yes, you probably yeah. could. But, but a few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It could be. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for talking about tech. I'm sure that, that we'll have a lot more questions about, about tech and crumble. And as people see this, they'll want to know more about the behind the scenes. So sure. if that's the case, we will have you on again on another season. You let me know. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much for being here, Bryce. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of the crumble mumble. Thanks. Bye.